So beautiful ladies stop me at the grocery store all the time and they're like, Jeremy, tell me about your home networking setup. What do you use? How does it work and all that? So, well, maybe not beautiful ladies at the grocery store. Maybe it's fellow nerds in the comments of the videos. But in any case, here we go. Let's talk about network stuff. And this one's topical for me because I've got a new device that I have to put into the pile home theater AV tech setup here because something just died on me. I'll say a few things right off the bat in that at the high level, I mean, I really keep my network set up pretty darn simple, honestly. I don't buy really expensive networking equipment. I don't buy like super high-end managed gear and all that stuff. Uh, I just don't have that much of a need for it in the household. And I think some people kind of go a little bit nuts with their network stuff. I mean, if you have needs for virtual LANs and, and you've got dozens and dozens of devices on your home network, that's kind of one thing. But I run a pretty significant stack of network stuff in our household here. And honestly, I've never really felt a super need to spend a lot of money on the networking infrastructure. There's really only three pieces, I would say, to my entire network setup. I've got a cable modem. I have gigabit internet service provided by WOW here in Southeast Michigan, great company, no affiliation or, or sponsorship or anything for me to say this, but I've been very happy with them for many years. Most of the years we've lived in this house, we've used WOW. I also have access to AT&T and uh, Comcast Xfinity. WOW has been the ideal service provider for me. So I've got a cable modem, I've got a router, which uh, for the last several years now has been a Netgear. That's been working fine. It has all the power and capability and such that I need. And then in the actual AV rack, I've got one 24 port network switch where all of the drops throughout the household wire down to the AV rack here. All of the stuff in the AV rack itself, uh, I try to keep as much stuff wired as I possibly can. And I'm using about 16 ports or so out of the 24. That's it. A simple unmanaged switch and, and I'm golden for my network topology. So to be specific, my cable modem is a Motorola MB8611. That's a Doxis 3.1 modem. Just got it from Best Buy. That's relatively new. My, cap my prior cable modem did die last year. I bought this model uh, last spring, basically spring of 2022. Simple purchase from Best Buy, about 170 bucks. Of course, it was on the approved list for a while. Um, I don't like renting the modem. I prefer choosing my own equipment. So I, I do buy my own cable modems. I always have. And I would recommend doing that versus just taking whatever the, the cable company might actually give you. My router is a Netgear Nighthawk AX6600. That was bought in December of 2020 after my prior router bit the dust. So that's been in service for a couple of years now. Another purchase just from Best Buy, about $370. And if you notice a theme here, my cable modem, my router, and now my network switch are all new within the last few years. And so maybe I'm not spending enough money on network equipment. I don't know, but this stuff is always on. It's always working. And I think historically speaking, these devices, you know, they don't have lifespans that are truly measured uh, in several of years or decades or anything like that. Plus the technology moves forward anyway. You probably need a new cable modem maybe every five years or so as internet speeds go up, as Wi-Fi, need a new router, as new Wi-Fi standards come along. So it's not like we need these, these purchases to be 10-year purchases anyway. And if we're going to turn them over in three to five years, you now I'm happy spending 150, 200 bucks on a cable modem, $300, $400 on a router, I don't want to go buying a $5,000 router or thousands of dollars of extra more powerful networking equipment that I just don't really need. So that brings me to the third piece. I formerly had an Asus 24 port unmanaged gigabit switch sitting in the back of the rack. Just the other day, I got a notification like from the security company. There was a, a monitoring fault and everything uh, since then has been down. So that switch just fried, just stopped working. There's really nothing to diagnose or troubleshoot with it. You unplug it, you wait a little bit, you plug it back in, and it either powers on and works or it doesn't, and mine doesn't. So I needed a new switch. I did a little bit of research, and I just got this in. This is a Netgear Business GS324. 24-port Ethernet switch. Pretty small, all things considered. Only about 10 or so inches wide, but it is rack-mountable comes in the box with the rack brackets, the screws to attach them. It also comes with some things to be able to wall mount. 
And again, unmanaged switch. I don't really have a need to segment my network. I don't need to worry necessarily about quality of service going through this device or, or you know, such specific configurations needed for a device. I mean, what am I really running? I'm streaming some video, I'm playing some games, surfing the internet, and I've got my home automation and control stuff. I've got my Synology server here on the network. It's really not all that much stuff. And so gigabit wired networking, simple unmanaged stuff, just takes care of business in its entirety for me. I will say after doing a little bit of research on the switches, Netgear offers a couple different lines of product. There's like the blue switches and some of the blue networking gear that I think they label for home use, which is the stuff I think that you can get off the shelf at Best Buy. But looking at the actual specs, I found that the Soho products from Netgear looked like a better purchase overall. It was actually a little bit cheaper uh, this switch was only like $103 from Amazon. Literally ordered it in the evening and it came before lunchtime the next day, which was pretty awesome. $103 bucks plus tax. But the specs on the Netgear business, the Netgear Soho devices, are just a little bit better than the blue home use ones. Uh, the latency that was quoted for the, the switching through the ports is a good bit less, but we're still talking about like uh, several microseconds versus like tens of microseconds and there's a little bit more cash some more memory it's a slightly more powerful device and you don't even pay more money for the pleasure of the better one so I guess pro tip there I like Netgear as a brand I've used a lot of their stuff over the years but based on what I learned here I will definitely be looking more towards future purchases in the Netgear Soho business lines rather than just the off-the-shelf home use Netgear equipment. And if you're interested in any Netgear stuff or anything that I'm talking about, of course I do recommend go ahead and get it from Amazon. Look down in the description for some affiliate links. I would appreciate the support provided to the channel if you purchase in such a way. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and, and throw this guy in the rack. So just to show it off quick, there's the switch with the rack gear wings on it. Just sits right in the middle. You know, standard whatever, 19 fits a 19 inch rack, 17 or so inches wide although i have to do a usability complaint here one of my favorite things to do on the channel manufacturers when you're designing something a box and this box has to have uh, rack mount ears and stuff put on it when you place the screws so close to the actual bracket that i can't even get my screwdriver in there to push straight down and screw those screws in that's what i call a pain in the butt please put your screw connections at least enough back from the actual rack mount piece that I can actually drive the screw in right. Um, thankfully, most of them went in right, but I struggled with this one a little bit. It didn't want to thread straight, and I'm kind of threading on an angle. I got it in with enough you know, down pressure in that, but coming real close to stripping that screw. Space. We need space for our screwdrivers when we rack mount stuff, please. And there we are. Glowing lights where there formerly were none. So you can see I keep my switch up at the top of the rack here on the right hand side relative to the back. You know, I'm using most of those ports, only a few open. I only connect what's active. I don't keep all the drops through the whole house plugged in when I'm not using them. But that fits in there nice right up at the top. Rack mounted, nice short power plug to the strip there. Monoprice power cable, perfect. And so that's it, we're in, we're golden. Network's working, now to test everything out, make sure we're good to go. Here's the Asus that came out. This is an Asus GXD1241, I think a version one. Not sure how long this has actually been in the install, at least probably several years. We've been in this house almost 10 years and all of the network infrastructure and that went in right when we moved in. It, it, this thing ran for a while, several years. Um, it had been flaking out a little bit, Every once in a while, I'd say maybe for the last year, sometimes have to unplug it, plug it back in, and then finally gave up the ghost. So this will go, I think, to Best Buy. I'm just going to put it in the e-waste, uh, e tech waste recycling there, and say goodbye. And we're good to go. $100 Netgear 24-port switch. I should add as well that I don't necessarily have any major aspirations for additional networking complexity in the house. I don't think I really need much more. But there will be a couple things happening in the not-too-distant future. One, 
as I uh, advance the living room plans, uh, as I've talked about in some of the recent videos on the channel, getting an actual AV cabinet and moving my source and processing equipment and all of that, I probably will end up with another little switch uh, in the installation, maybe just a little five port switch inside that AV cabinet, and I will be looking to stay consistent. I like things consistent. I, when I find a brand and models of things that I like in my setup, in my technology, I tend to stick with them, so I will be looking for another small uh, Netgear business style switch there. And then the other big thing that I would have hopefully coming in the not too distant future, we'll see, maybe not 2023, hopefully 2024, early 2024 at the latest, would finally be cameras. I really want cameras, network cameras, home automation cameras around my house so that I can keep an eye on things know what's going on and all of that stuff. So I already have my Synology, which conceivably could be a camera DVR. I would like the cameras to integrate with HomeKit so that on my Apple TVs, I would be able to pull up camera feeds and stuff like that, but then also cross over so that they end up working uh, with Control 4. We did wire the house when we set it up for cameras. I don't even remember where all the drops are and how many there are. I think I've probably got close eight, eight to 10 camera existing lines ready for cameras inside and outside the house. So I'm fully set for, for that. And what I would be looking for hopefully is like a power over ethernet style camera. No need for wireless, no need for separate power runs. And in that, in, at, when that time comes, I would look probably to add another uh, or a, another switch to the setup, just install it right below the one that's already in there specifically a dedicated like 8 port or 16 port, whatever it takes with the right kind of power requirements, PoE style switch just to run all those cameras on and then keep the rest of the equipment on just the regular switch. But even still, I need a PoE switch able to power those cameras and network them all. Still probably don't need a lot of management. So an unmanaged PoE is what I'll be looking for when the time comes. So stay tuned to the channel. More on home automation and all of that stuff coming up. So sound off in the comments. What do you like for networking? Do you spend more for networking? Do you have a really complex network setup? Do you need managed switches and VLANs and all this other kind of stuff? Or do you keep it kind of simple, uh, simple and more cost effective like I do? Let me know, uh, share your story, share your setup. What brands do you like? What devices do you use? All that, sound off in the comments. And otherwise, please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, share the videos. And if you'd like to help support the channel, help me get those cameras, give me some more stuff to talk about, cover here on the channel, lots of ways to do that. If you're buying network gear, again, get it from Amazon, use the affiliate links below. And there's also super thanks channel memberships and a whole lot more ways to be awesome. And I thank you for whatever you might do. Thanks so much for watching. Come on back for more home theater, home automation, networking tech, all of that stuff for discussion and fun.